Hi friends, and welcome back to me renovating my vintage camper turned Airbnb. So if you're new here, I'm Sarah, also known as Budget Girl on the internet, and I love all things streams of income and wealth building on a budget and for normal people. So if you like that, don't forget to like this video and also subscribe. We're almost at 100K, like we're so close. Come, come join the fun, the party, it's free. So today is the second renovation video for the Ag Wagon, which is my vintage holiday rambler travel trailer renovation from an old camper into a really, really cute short-term rental vacation stay. It is listed on Airbnb and Verbo and also at theagwagon.com. You can check it out there. You can also look at all the pictures on the Ag Wagon socials at the Ag Wagon and it's been a really really fun journey it's now been up for a little over three months almost it's now been up for like three four months and i'm officially an airbnb super host all of my guests have been absolutely wonderful and this is a really fun new stream of income to get into so today we're tackling the biggest aesthetic makeover of the camper painting the camper when i got it it's this silver behemoth with all the old vintage 80s lines on it and i wanted to really give it a great refresh make it maroon and white aka a m's colors because it is the ag wagon or the aggie wagon for a m university where i work and i knew immediately when buying it that i would be doing the painting myself i did actually look up how much it would cost to get it professionally painted you can even get like glitter sheen and stuff if you have it done professionally but it was going to be thousands upon thousands of dollars so i feel pretty confident at painting in fact that was the only thing i felt like i would not have a problem with in this reno everything else was a learn as you go leap and the net will appear situation but i've never been afraid of a challenge and you shouldn't be either i did manage my way through renovating both sides of my duplex and I'll have other real estate videos down below because I really like real estate and doing it myself and being able to put in sweat equity into a project. Uh, it's a lot of fun for me and I always get to learn something new. Prepping and painting the camper took almost two weeks and it was a massive undertaking. Mostly because you never know when it's gonna rain. You have to take off all of the caulking and the seals for between the metal panels on this old camper. And as soon as you expose those, there's the fear of water getting in because all of the things that are clamping everything together are suddenly not there. So after tearing out all of the seam covers and pulling out all the caulk, we then had to clean the camper with water no less. Had to clean the camper and just really hope that water didn't get inside because the seam covers aren't there anymore. And then prime and paint it. I ended up purchasing some specialty straight to metal paint from Home Depot and I'll put it up here and link it down below and it worked really well. I had some of it custom tinted into the maroon color that I wanted the stripe and the door to be and it went on just like normal paint. I ended up purchasing two gallon cans of primer, two gallon cans of white and then one gallon can of the maroon and that was exactly enough. I also had to tape off all of the silver on the camper, which included the seam covers, the things that were holding like the windows in, and all of the associated little metal accoutrements. And then of course I papered off the windows. So as soon as you do all of that, painting has to happen fast because all of those seals are gonna start failing as soon as you put them on. I actually ended up taking several days off of work to finish this in time and get everything back on, uh, but I think it was worth it. So I hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's go. All right, so it's supposed to be a good non-rainy weekend. I also have real estate friends from the area coming on Thursday, so I'm gonna try to get this painted. It's Friday at five after work. I figure I have two hours of daylight, so I'm gonna try to finish sanding and decaulking in the hopes that I can start papering and taping off and paint tomorrow. Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> It is Saturday. It is cold. I got this side of the trailer done in the back all decalked yesterday, but I just kind of ran out of steam and my knee was killing me. Today I put together my new pressure washer and I'm going to try to finish decalking and finish sanding and then pressure wash to get all the dirt off before I start painting. So let's see how much I get done. 
also I figured out that the paint that I had matched for the inside didn't exactly match and when I was trying to do some uh, touch-ups I just made it so I have to repaint the whole thing. That and that do not match so that'll be fun. Oh well at least the black match. <laughs> Apparently I shot the uh, power washing in regular, not speed up, sped up, so sorry to my editor. Uh, <laughs> the camper is washed, a lot of dirt came out. I'm a little concerned because I had to power out the treads the where the seam covers will go, which is like direct access to the camper, but there was a lot of dirt in there I was able to get out, which I think will mean a better seal when I do seal it back up, a better paint coat. So I do think that was necessary. Unfortunately now the camper is wet and I need to wait for it to dry before I can start the first coat of paint. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, try to do the last couple of long pieces for the bedroom window framing and I'm gonna bring you back to my house to charge because you're about to die I'm sorry <laughs> all right um, hopefully my electrical guy will be back soon it's been a while and uh, I would really like power to the camper that would be great and uh, yeah a lot of stuff is kind of waiting on him to finish his stuff and yeah um, doing okay today knee hurts a little Jacob was amazing helping me with the hoses. I They were stuck, I couldn't, the too many seals. Water, water plus a seal, even with the channel locks, I couldn't get it open, but he helped me. And the power washing went really good. That was like an $80 power washer from Amazon. I was really surprised it worked that well. And now I have a power washer, which can be used for so many things. So I'm excited about that. And I'm gonna try to finish out the windows. See you in a bit. You've lost track of time, don't know how to feel. Jonathan has offered to teach us how to get rivets off, specifically this kind. I just, I don't really know how. And we're also going to take this wheel well thing off. Let's go. Okay, so when you're getting rivets off, uh, it's actually really simple. The way a rivet works, these are called pop rivets. And the way a pop rivet works is there's an inside piece and there's a piece that when it gets pulled out, it expands the back side of the rivet. So the way you remove a rivet is very simple. So you look for a drill bit that's just a little bit bigger than this hole right here because that's what we're trying to remove is just this outside piece. Safety first. And then you just drill it out. That's why it's called drilling out a rivet. Oh, that is easier and, than I thought. And that's it. And then so what you do from there is you take a little punch tool. This is not actually a punch, but I couldn't find my punch. And you just pop, punch out the, the other side. Anyways, you punch out the rivet, but like I said. Through the back. Yeah. And then there's a hole that we just fill with like quick meld. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So yeah, so you just take this and drill them out. So rivets are actually they're a extremely old technology. They're really, really neat if you actually understand how they work. And if they work correctly. But what rivets are really good at is binding two pieces of material together, specifically like metal or really thin material, mm -hmm. where you really, I mean, obviously you can't drill through this and into this, it wouldn't hold. That's why you use a pop rivet, is because what that pop rivet does is when it expands, as it expands, it pushes the two pieces together. Interesting. Yeah, that's a lot less hard than I thought it would be. Yep. 
suppose I could have Googled it, but I didn't think to do that. I thought to ask you. Well, that's okay, you have me. That's, you did ask. You did ask me. <laughs> it seemed like it was. It seemed like it would be harder. Than that. So. So when you're selecting the drill bit size, um, what's important is you want a size that's bigger than the middle of the hole. Okay. So you're, all you're trying to do is just pull that out, that off, outside piece off. That's all you're trying to do. Okay. So what's your the YouTube name again? Budget Girl. Budget Girl. I want to watch some of your videos. I just like, I've, I was just curious about it. I thought about having my own YouTube channel. Well, ones that teach, there are a bunch of ones that teach you how to do stuff that are in wildly profitable and popular. Really? Yeah. Who knows? I definitely like teaching people stuff. To just enjoy it. charged up. Uh, here's what's happened while you were gone. Currently the window is out and we're trying to get some particularly stubborn caulk off. Jonathan has been working in here. He's removed this panel and is switching out the inverter and has installed a plug and is doing other wildly difficult and intimidating electrical things. And I've taped off the outside and uh, filled all the holes, sanded down, and we're getting ready to primer the very front. Might be all we get to today because it's currently five o'clock and sun's gonna set soon, but that's progress. Lots of progress. Happy Sunday. So it's actually very dark in here right now because taped off the rest of the camper. I thought it was going to take a couple of hours, but I kind of tricked Jacob into helping me with it. He's at the house cleaning and he came out to ask if I wanted to save a box because, well, that's the type of really the person I am and he's very kind. So uh, and I was like, no, that's trash. I was just, you know, sawing on it. <laughs> Here, hold this tape, and I ended up getting him to help me tape off the whole rest of the camper. Which is amazing though, because that only ended up taking us like half an hour, versus a couple hours it would have taken me by myself. I really hate going up and down the ladder, and he did the whole top for me. Yay, he's incredible. So now it's time to prime the rest of the camper, and then, while that's drying, I can get started on painting this front side. The, uh, my electrician is supposed to be here in a little bit to uh, finish changing out the electrical panel and inverter and all the other stuff in the bedroom, which means after that I can finally get the rest of the bedroom stuff in. You're sitting on a mattress box right now, by the way, so good for you. And <laughs> And yeah, let's get to it. I was really hurting when I got up this morning and also last night my feet were killing me. But now that I'm out and about and kind of moving, it's 70 degrees in the camper, about 55 outside. And it's a really nice day to be doing this. 
so yeah I think we're gonna be able to make it today as far as painting goes which is very exciting all right uh, let's go a break for a couple hours but I think it's actually looking pretty good I see a section I haven't done and I need to raise this up and paint underneath but all primed it also only took one gallon of paint to prime it which is nice because that means I can return the other gallon of primer since it's untinted I'll get like $45 back so let me finish what I started and then I'll switch to the actual painting all right, bye. Monday. I took today off so that I could finish painting the camper and my electrician is here. He's going to be finishing out fixing the uh, main electric panel for the camper and building out the box that's going to hold it, uh, which is very exciting. So once that's, <laughs> I'm so tired. Uh, it's like 11 a.m. I'm just now getting my crop together. Maggie's excited that I stayed home. Whoa. Oh no, there's a bone in play. This, this there's a bone in play. It, they just steal each other's bones all day. It's It doesn't matter if there are two bones, they're always fighting over one bone. And, good lord. And Maggie's choosing to eat her bone, like, in Rory's lap, essentially. But she doesn't want Rory to get it. She just wants Rory to know she has it. Honestly, it's a little evil. So, let's go paint the stripe on the camper. <laughs> Stuck with a 30 amp plug. 
But a lot of people think, oh well, one's 30 amp, one's 50. 50 isn't that much more. But the thing is, you have two 50 amp breakers. So what I'm trying to say is that yes, this will plug into any normal 50 amp, mm -hmm. you know, outlet, and you have plenty of power. Yay! So. That's that's good. Thank yes, you. And I'm sure some of my readers will have understood more than that than me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I tried. okay. So the total amperage available when you have a 30 amp RV, mm -hmm. right, with a 30 amp plug, is 30 amps. Yeah. That's it. That's all you get. Mm -hmm. With a 50 amp RV, you get 100 amps. Because you have the two. Because you have two 50s. Not whoever named these things. I know. It's confusing as hell. It took me like probably about a year to finally figure it out because I had to ask one of my master electrician friends okay so is this 50 amp or is this 100 amp you know and like I said the way it works is you have one line coming in to each 50 amp breaker mm -hmm. and each side will do 50 amps so it's good that basically means that like just one of the wires coming in would have been what this thing used to run on now mm -hmm. you have two yay so you have tons of power and i also don't have just like a big hole in my wall anymore when i want to plug it in he he installed a plug so it plugs in from the inside and it plugs in from the outside which massive improvement indeed yeah <laughs> okay check it out fam it is nighttime and the trailer is powered this whole time i've been working without power but we have it it's night i can work out here at night look 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 all right so Jonathan completed this today. Beautiful custom cabinet. Here's all the electrical. Beautiful. You can tell it's done well. And yeah, I'm gonna try to figure out if I can set up the bed in here. Cause that little port is potentially a problem. So yeah, I'm gonna futz at night. It's like 8.30. Jacob is not happy that I am uh, out here futzing around but that's okay. <laughs> um, we have a late dinner. Let's go. <laughs> also, sorry, I didn't film touching up everything earlier. It was just touching up stuff and installing a few things. So. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> okay, so it's Wednesday. I took another day off and something terrible happened. Last night, Jacob was helping me do touch-ups, and he uh, did the top up there, and apparently it was really humid, and he rolled a lot, and the same thing kind of happened over here. So we had just like massive drips before the paint dried, and I'm out of the maroon paint, and I went to Home Depot to buy some more, because it's special straight to metal paint, and they're out. They won't have any again for a couple days, and I'm gonna have to retape and redo the whole back and part of the side. But that's not the worst news right now. It is supposed to rain tonight hard and I need to get all the ceiling redone. So I got silicone, I have the corner seals. I'm not in a good physical condition to do this. I do not feel good at all, but I don't really have a choice. It's the kind of thing you have to like, you have to get it done. So it's like 11 a.m. I'm gonna get it done. All right, bye. So I realize I'm on a time crunch, but I just wiped all of that off because I hate the gray. The uh, handyman told me I should use it and that it would match the silver, and that sounded good, but on it just looks like white taupey snot. So yeah, I'm gonna do the clear silicone as originally planned and take all of those back. 90 bucks worth of silicone. Fortunately, since they're, I'll only lose the money on the one. Yeah, hate it, hate it. Dad on me early yesterday. Naughty. So you didn't see me 
um, do the rest of the caulking all the way around the camper and start on the uh, screw covers. Screw covers, which I thought actually would be really fun to put in and I do think they make like a really big difference. I'll show you what they are. This is a screw cover. This little band and you put it in the force these into here um, and to do that you have to kind of smush it in half and it's very hard plastic and then force it into the little gutters on either side now they look fantastic like I think it's really gonna set it off make it kind of look like piping around the thing but just getting this middle one which wraps all the way around destroyed my hands and my nails so we were trying to get it sealed before it rained last night. We got all the caulking on and that's all I could ask really. Um, and I got some of the seam covers. Look how spicy that looks, right? But the rest of it's gonna have to wait till this weekend. So today I have people coming this evening. Took the day off again and uh, mostly it's like 2 p.m. I went and got stuff for food for tonight. And now I'm just kind of trying to bring some little things over. So. I have my little rotary of mugs, the plates, cups, all that. Brought pan over and a little and sign and this stuff. I'm gonna see if that will fit in the back and I need to paint the new nightstand slash electrical box so that I can cut the wood and make the bed. So let's see how much I can get done. Oh, and y'all missed it. So while I was working, and Jonathan was working on his stuff as well, we started to smell like a Bernie smell. And so we immediately checked the dog bones and the electrical cord to see if those were overheating or what. He brought out a heat gun, which I thought was a really cool solution. Turns out the AC wasn't installed quite properly. He had to get up on the roof. We just turned the AC off, cut everything. And there were some wires on top of the AC that were kind of hitting against the metal and burning and he was able to take some zip ties fix those and no more burning working really well also we opened this vent which means coal airflow is going this way it's really nice to have electricity in here so so nice so yeah oh and i also brought in my turkish towels um hopefully i'll get that installed today right now i really want to focus on this get this painted so that i can install bed stuff so that's what i'm gonna do now one more thing one more thing so one of jonathan's jobs yesterday was getting all of the crazy cord which had been just kind of like all over the place fixed that's why i was able to put the stuff in the kitchen and there was also some crazy cordage in here it was more than that but still just like wires all over the place i'm not comfortable pinning those back and he said that when he went for this Suddenly that became a bigger job because whoever did it didn't install the right box. And this is 120, this is on 120 system. And these little cord connectors are all open, not wrapped with electrical wire. And they're like close to the grounding wires. And maybe that didn't make entire sense, but he explained it to me and it made sense. Essentially this is not safe. And uh, it was a real cheap skate way to uh, do it or over installed it, didn't know what they were doing, and a big old fire hazard. So he's getting the right box for this, and he's fixing this, and he's also gonna check all of my other switches to see if that same thing was done, because I would really like this camper not to burn down. I've put a lot of money and time and effort into it, and blood, at this point, a little bit of blood. All right, now into painting. <laughs> It is Saturday and here's where we are. So you guys have been napping on me slash I forgot to charge you. I've put that up. I'm trying to get the longer legs for the bed. The screw doesn't quite fit so I need to go later get that. Um, some adapters and that's so it'll clear that over there and also be a little higher. I've painted this. Third coat of stain is going over there and we're currently trying to get these screw covers in and repaint the maroon with the white blood over it. So, let's go.
thank you so much for watching my paint renovation of the Ag Wagon. You can check out more videos on that, including the uh, what it looked like when I first got it and what it looks like all finished down below. And I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.